my monitor on oh i see hello hello uh so i'm not going to go face on tonight i'm not feeling my greatest so um we're going to do this live with hands on welcome to thursday night eight o'clock um, eastern standard time this is tammy louise with tlc designs i'm in the state of michigan james is the camera on the far one out yep it is Okay, so a few of the things that I wanted to cover tonight, I have this pile, so we're going to go real quick while we wait for some people to join us. This is the card that I ended up making last Thursday, and it follows the sketch. And I added the sun, and it's all completed. I put little gemstones, and I just wanted to make, make sure everyone knew that the sketch challenge with this um, Home Tree Home is the name of this digital file. And you get some really pretty blooming papers with the bundle for $5 in the store. And you get to play until it'll be March 31st this month. So if you have um, any questions about that, don't hesitate to ask us. Mr. Jim will let me know if you guys are going on and, and have some questions about that. Haven't had any entries yet, so get some entries in if you'd like to play and win $5. Um, we welcome you to it. We'd love to see the projects, actually. So I got this from the design team member who created it for one of the blog hops. Her name is Tangie. And I just kind of really wanted to show everybody some of the other stuff that she sent in to me that she created. Isn't that kitty cat cute? So cute. All of these were made with product from the store. I believe this Ink Me in Pink digital stamp set is actually a freebie. The papers aren't, but the stamp set is. So you can run in there and grab any of the freebies that you'd like. They're in the tab called promotion. Um, this is made with the Heart and Land stencil. It's pretty new. We just released it a month or two back. And she used um, <coughs> Trolling By is the little girl that she used. And this little guy is bugging a rug. I think it's one of the digital images. She is in polymer. This one is digital bug in the rug. And I think it's only available right now. I am changing that pretty soon in one of the sketches. So if you'd like to work with that. And I got, look, I love it when she does these. Isn't that <laughs> sweet? This is um, Tiptoe Fairy Dance are both of these images. And they are polymer. And she makes little calendars. I don't know where she gets these little calendars from, but it's super, super cute. I'm actually going to put this on my desk just so I can look at it and smile. So Candace is the design team member that did a lot of the sketch easy releases. So this is, again, one of those sketches that she created. <clears throat> Excuse me. When the release actually came out, she did a full tutorial on it. So if you're interested in seeing how she puts all this together, then it's on the YouTube channel. Again, this is another one of the sketches. It had scalloped oval dye and one of the bug in a rug mushrooms. She used land and seas dye, the mushroom set that's on the back. I don't know if you can see very well but the grass and the mushrooms which you can separately cut the top of the red portion of the mushroom can you see how they yeah, good. yeah the little brown things look really cute and then whoops this one looks like it came unglued probably a little tricky to get it with the right glue on there so and she's really pretty paper in the background on this because it kind of looks like a sky but it's actually a wood grain you can't tell it's beautiful this is I want to say joy. There's peace, love, and joy angels in the store, and I think we're running out of them. Um, so if you're interested in any Christmas, I know she's on clearance too. So if you're interested in picking up some really well-priced Christmas stuff, she is in Polymer, and she's in the store <coughs> now in the promotions, I believe, section. So... She has a see you in the center, which is super cute. She used Snow Family Mail. 
there's snow family tree and snow family male sets. And uh, I think the woman comes in the other one. I'm not positive about that, but you get all these beautiful papers. They have digital papers that match and they, you can buy them pre-colored or you can buy them to color yourself. And then the see you in the center die makes a move. Isn't that fun? She even put a snowflake over the bread so you can't see it. Look how fun this shaker is. Oh. <laughs> really cute snowflake shaky pieces. It says snowflakes and ice and everything nice. This is from maybe Snow Friends. I'm not positive the name of this set, stamp set, but it is in the store. If you like to take a look and see what's going on for Christmas. Now, this is the joy image, just like that other, I think that one was peace, because the loved one has a big heart and a ribbon that she's carrying. And they're really cute. They're illustrated by Maria Medell. They're um, exclusive to TLC Design, so you won't find them anywhere else. Um, she did a great job adding the peppermint paper in the background, and then this um, solid color that comes with that paper that's kind of color coordinates everything. And she used one of the dies that come inside another die set. I don't know where she got the letters, but it looks really cute because that big O looks like an O. The big circle looks like an O. Oh, it looks like an O, Jim. It does. Yeah. <laughs> so this is um, Snow Fairies or Fairy Fun and Snow Babies. And she used the large oval scalloped die on this. And again, peppermint paper in the background. I did get several of her Christmas cards because I don't have a lot of samples with these little baby fairies. This is called Jingle Time, I think. Jingle Time? And it's a digital stamp set. And it actually comes with a little Santa. So you can make these any size you want. She really shrunk these down. She put little bulbs that are in the set in this hand and a candy cane in this one. It says peace, love, and joy. It's a cute card. I love that color combination. So when she <laughs> blogged this particular project, which is Unicorn Happiness. Uh, no, Warm and Fuzzy Unicorn. That's what it's called. It's illustrated by Lee Howland. It's exclusive. You won't find it anywhere else. And it is in polymer. But when she blogged it, you couldn't tell that she had all these. Can you see those little gemstones? Yep. It's like snow. It was such a cute idea. These embellishment dies that she got, she um, used from Star Spangled Confetti die set. So she kind of mixed and matched and it really brought it together nicely. This is the um, die frame that comes with, see you in the center? No. Yeah, see you in the center, I think. No, apple a day is where this comes from. It's really pretty frame. It's, a, it's an ovular, ovular? Oval-ish frame. This is called, what's this one called, James? Bewitched. <laughs> um, spooking all the way or something? It's not, it, has, it has the word spooky in it, I think. Um, the illustrations are by Maria Medell, and she really made good use of this frame, made the whole card. It's almost a mini slimline. Made the whole card out of this particular die set and really cute coloring. And I think this was the illustration that you get in one of those sketches too, one of the sketch bundles. Oh, um, Chili Fun is the stamp set. I don't think we have any more of that polymer, but now it is available in digital. And by the way, now that I mentioned digitals, I want to mention that um, we are going to start real soon here. I, I'm assuming she's going to start. We're going to create a series of how to use digitals. And Andy said boom and scary. Uh, what? Boom and scary. Boo and scary? Say boo and scary on. That's the name of it. Who said that? Andy. Amy, thank you. Mm -hmm. Say boo and scary on is the name of that one. Um, what were they saying? Oh, uh, Shanna 
Slater, the design team member coordinator, is going to do a series for digital stamps. And I know a lot of you ladies that come uh, and gentlemen that come on to the lives are really hesitant about digital stamps. And it's basically because it's the unknown for you, right? Um, but we want to show you right after you purchase and you get the email and you download it onto your computer, that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with unzipping. We're going to start with sorting between JPEGs and PNGs that have white background and PNGs that don't. We're going to show you, I'm hoping she's willing to do two different ways. One with Microsoft Word, which I think is going to be the most popular for some of the older ladies that um, craft. And then she's going to use, what is it that she used on that one? I think she said it was some kind of a Word doc or a Google doc or something like that. And she's going to pull those digital files in. She's going to create a frame that's the size of four and a quarter by five and a half. And she's going to show you what it looks like to pull that digital stamp in to your size because you're going to have a like a frame size to work with. You're going to make it the size that you want. It could be this big, like this little mouse, could be the fox size, could be the girl size. And you can create the entire scene so that you can either print them out and color them and separate them. Or she could have put this mouse on top of the little girl's head and printed it out as one object, one illustration. And she's going to show the difference in the layers and everything. We're going to go from step A all the way to Z. We're going to get you to be printing it and cutting it out or just using it flat and coloring it and making a project with it. So I hope that series will start before <laughs> May. The advantage of the digital is if you've got like two of those characters uh -huh. that are the same size. Uh -huh. You can make one smaller, one bigger. So it's like... Oh, absolutely. So away. for example, this... Fox could have been the size of this mouse and the mouse could have been the size of the fox. So you could do that with any digitals. And, and that's not the only versatile way of using a digital either. In the computer system, I could this she could have been flipped over. So she could be facing that way. And then you could flip the fox this way or have two foxes facing and skating toward each other. With digital stamps, it's pretty endless what you can do. Um, make them any size invert them. Uh, there's no storage. You don't need to actually store them anywhere other than your computer. Uh, immediate gratification. So you live in New Zealand, you know, you get your digitals the same day. It's not something that you have to pay extraordinarily large import fees or anything like that. And the prices of digitals are lower than the prices of, of polymer stamps. A lot of people like to get a little inky and do that polymer stamping. And I love it too, but I love digitals. There's, there's something for everybody when you, and in TLC designs, um, I pride myself in trying to make sure that every crafter can come in and find something that they'd like to work with. So I'm going to continue to do both polymer and digital stamps. Once the polymer stamps are sold out, if they weren't extremely popular, um, you know, I might not take another opportunity to remanufacture them. I might just create them in, which I have done. Forest Pals used to be polymer that I got from a store that was closing. Uh, Chili Fun, you know, once they close out, then I can create them as digital files and you can still get them and use them. I just won't have them in polymer again. So this is Shake Your Card and this is called Never, Never, N E N apostrophe er never land i didn't want to put neverland because you know there's copyright issues that you might have to deal with anyway look how cute this is neverland fairy girl and a little guy that looks like peter pan oh, it looks like peter pan i didn't say he was peter pan <laughs> um and she used zinnia slimline i believe is what this is either that or the multi slimline slimline multi slider i can't remember which one comes with us but we have two different slimline designs in this store. So if you want to take a look at that, it says just a pinch of fairy dust. It's super cute. And this one is um, Frankie. And two nights ago or three nights ago, I actually went in and looked at the Creeping It Real set is where Frankie originally comes from. Um, and I think it's a little large for the price so i separated frankie from 
Drake. This one is Drake, Matt Frankie. Um, I separated the two and put a few <laughs> embellishment stamps in there and then put the sentiments in there as well. So this is going to be broken up into two different sets very soon once I get this released. <laughs> um, that's my next goal is to kind of straighten out the store. Plus, a long time ago when I started the store, which we are on our third year, by the way, this month is the third year anniversary. Um, when I started the store, I used to put digitals for sale with just the copyright um, words across them. And I didn't have a real pretty uh, package insert or anything like that. But real soon, you're going to see that change in the store. I've actually gone through and created package inserts for each and every stamp set, regardless if it's um, digital or if it's polymer. You just need to look over in the top left hand corner and check to make sure that you're actually buying what you want. So it'll say digital stamps or it'll just say 11 stamps and that'll be polymer. Happy fall, y'all. It's super cute. This is a rosy sentiment die. I love how she used that to be the orange and the craft to be the brown underneath. This is Qual Kindness. He's a digital stamp. Super cute. And here's Frankie. I just love him. I think he's one of my favorite Maria Medell stamp sets. And he has coordinating paper with Frankie and Drake. Can you see? Yep. Frankie and Drake. Are you looking here? Yes. Yeah, here. This is the Santa that comes with Jingle Time. Those two little fairies that were decorating the tree in the other card. This is the Santa that comes with him. And it's a digital stamp set. <gasps> Poetic Pixie. I think he's adorable. I might be coming out with him in Palomar because he has three other girls that are back to school kind of image girls, fairies that I've never put out anywhere. So I'm thinking if I put them back into a set, maybe even break it up and put two. So you get two people plus a bunch of different embellishments in each individual set. I think that's what I plan on doing. Hopefully this summer we'll have him out in Palomar. But he is currently right now available in digital. And she has a whole stack of post-it notes, which is a really good idea. Might have to keep that on my desk too, James. What do you think? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give you a sneak peek, but don't tell anybody. Look, oh, how cute. Oh, I just got done creating that. And... I used the Hopping Hairs colored images from the package insert, these two little Hopping Hairs, and I integrated them into a watercolor background with a few other little PNG clip arts. And I created that piece of paper and I have six more coming that are going to be in a brand new watercolor. Let's see, what did I call it? Woodland watercolor. Because what we have coming out at the end of March is a brand new suite in our active exclusive suite card making product. And it's going to need a paper pack and it's going to have this stamp set or the kangaroo stamp set. It's going to have a brand new die, and it's the double dial die, but it's different. I won't, I won't like share all that information. But so the double dial die is changing just a little bit. We're going to have a separate mechanism <clears throat> die that you can buy for much less than what the actual big frame with the mechanism in it. But we're also making more frames that have that corner cut off, like these, right? See the corner cut off? That's where that wheel goes. And this is what the double dial die looks like. This was the first one that came out in October of 2019. And it's got a cute little ribbon almost looking circle on it. And the double dial die that came out after that. Let's see. I have a bunch of double dial die designs. I still haven't released this one, which... I think I already have this die out, so I don't know that I'll be doing that in double dial. But what was the second one, dearest? So here is the first one that we cut tonight. Oh, here. The second one is the one that just sold out in the store, or we barely have any of it left. Um, it's got an oval and then an eye shape all the way around. And it was the one that had this piece that came out. And then the one that we have now in the store, these are sold out. Oops. 
obviously I was not going to go back in there. So this was my very first one. It's going to be super fun to work with tonight because I haven't seen it forever. But the one that's in the store right now is a double dial die two. And it has a very, very super narrow eye shape around the edge. And you get some flower um, petals that you can cut in here. And the arm is one that's doubled. So once you cut it once and fold it in half, you get what you need. You get some leaves, the special little tool. And then what I've done is created the actual mechanism in one separate die so you guys can use this mechanism on anything that you want okay and what's coming out real soon i'm told i should have the samples within a day or two um is the mechanism all of this stuff is going to be in one separate die set that you can buy so anybody can buy the actual mechanism and make it on any sort of frame that they want um, and I've created two new, including one with hearts, two new little pretty designs around the edge and they have the edges cut so that it still works appropriately. But in the inside, you can get fences and gates and posts and a tree and all sorts of really fun stuff to build a scene with, with your guys. So I think I going that way gives an opportunity, you know, for every budget, they can still buy the mechanism and make it with any card that they want. And uh, you could still get frames anytime you want that go for a special occasion like Valentine's. You can choose the double dial die frame that has the hearts around it. So that is all I had to show you. I want to tell you with this die, all I did was cut it out on, I'm thinking this is 80 pound. And what I want to do, I think, is double it so that it's super strong because the mechanism does wear and this is paper. So I cut two of these. I'm going to glue those together. And then what we're going to do, what did I do with, oh, I want to show you this other paper too, but I don't want you guys to be able to look at it very long. Let me look through here real quick. This is my project holder that the projects are partially done like this one doesn't have anything on it and actually we can use this for the I didn't even know this is in here I don't know why it's in here maybe I was going to fix it all right Ooh, I forgot that was in here those are super cute <laughs> look at me I'm finding all kinds of cool stuff Oh, I know. This is my to-be-repaired folder, too. And this is one of the mm. double dial dies that I haven't finished putting together. Sometimes I ended up, when I used to do lives, I ended up making one as a sample and then making one with you all. So I would end up with two, and I thought, well, instead of throwing the entire thing away... Let's just use them up, like when I did my watercoloring of the little girl and a bunch of different papers. So I keep everything. I'm kind of a hoarder, <laughs> which isn't necessarily great, but it is what it is. All right. I don't think I have, I have a lot of CU in the centers to actually use, but I don't have any double dials. So we will start. Yeah, well, that would be fun, though, don't you think? Sure. Unless I can use this one, which is actually the same exact die, right? <coughs> the same exact die. The only thing is I kind of want to show you how to do it all. So I'm going to get a card base from up here. My tummy hurts. Isn't that terrible timing? That's just bad timing. Okay, I want to make sure this is definitely four and a quarter because last week I used one of these card bases that were pre-made and it was like something was off. I don't know if maybe I cut the design paper wrong or what I did, but it just was off. Okay, so I want to show you another one of the design papers that are going to come out. Uh, at the end of the month. Oops, it's upside down. Can you see the little birds? 
James? Yeah, can you bring it maybe a little bit closer? I don't know. I don't yeah, want it to. Good. I don't want it to lose focus. But focus. so I created these little birds on little nests of flowers, and then here's a mushroom. It's going to go in the woodland watercolor um, paper set, and I just finished it today, and I printed it out. And I thought, oh, how fun would that be? I'll just work with the new stuff, right? Why not? Hey. I can do anything I want. <laughs> Your show. It's, it's, it comes with the territory. <laughs> so I don't want the paper sideways. I want the paper this way. You need this part, don't you? I do, actually. I will tape this while you do that. Now, the only issue that I just realized with slimline paper um, that has images in one specific direction is that you can't use just half of it. So, like, if I turn this this way and just use this half of the paper, everything would be sideways. You wouldn't be able to tell that that was a, a bird in a nest, and that's not what I'm looking for. So, hmm, how to fix that? Maybe swivel all of the design. So you might not see this exact paper in the pack. I might have to swivel it so that everybody can use it all the different ways. This is one of the things that comes with being able to make your own paper. <laughs> I can make it whatever way I want. <laughs> it's a lot of work, though. A lot of work. All right, so we're going to cut this. Because a lot of the double dial die design projects that I see okay, has, oops, that is messy, has the, um, the brad that shows, and you don't necessarily have to show the brad. I'm just going to make a mess over there. Which way does it go? Which way does it go? I feel like Elmer Fudd. Which way did he go? Here it is. This way. So there. You automatically have the entire background on your project already cut in order to put brads through here and make the bunny rabbits <laughs> once i fussy cut them out do some humping oh, do some jumping and hopping that word almost came out really really wrong <laughs> almost i did not make the error all right, I'm really close to the microphone trying to grab my tape runner, so I apologize if it makes this huge racket or makes every card that I had on my entire table fall, <laughs> which it did. No, not every one of them, almost. Let me get the rest of these out of the way. Okay. This desk is, I might say, much smaller than the one I had at the other house. Don't you agree, dear? It is a lot smaller. It is a lot smaller. Okay. And I don't still have the right tape to go through the circles and not leave all that residue, you know? We're going to make sure you has more room than you ever needed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go for that. That's fine with me. Spend some money on me. Yeah, do it, do it right. Put the studio on super nice, you know, super good studio. I'll take it. Y'all heard him. I get, I get a large studio. <laughs> so I want to get close to the edges of this because you don't want it popping up away from the base that you're going to put this design paper on. You want it to really be close so that your paper that goes through here is a real smooth transition. 
All right, here. Who's online? I should say hi to everyone. Who's online? Well, we have Amy Dotson Dixon. Hi, Amy. We have Don Walsh. Miss Amy. I saw a and video Amy post Mary. from Don Walsh. Oh, why do I always run out in the middle of the live? Do you have an explanation for that, sweetheart? Oh, look what I found, babe. <laughs> the green daddy kind. I didn't think I had any more. Yay. Okay. Anyway, I was saying, there we go. I saw a post from Don Walsh. I don't know what it was about now, but something big had just happened. And she posted about it. And I think I said something to her. Manny's asking if you print the digital papers onto heavy cardstock, would you still need to double up? Depends on the cardstock weight, of course. So if you're going 60 or above, I would put one base under that. Um, I wouldn't put two. But the stronger your base is, the better your mechanism is going to work. So this is three thick, but the design paper is only 60 weight um, cover stock from Hammer Mill. And this is, I think, 60 weight stock paper. So I have quite a thick, about that thick. But it's sturdy, it's firm. So when I go to add the mechanism to it and put the double-sided foam tape, it's, it's not going to have such a warpy issue. Sometimes if you don't use strong enough uh, base, you'll end up having this happen. Like this portion will be in or this portion will be in and it, the mechanism won't work correctly. So you have to have as strong as you can get it. All right, honey, what else? I'm going to steal... I can see you in the center. I'm going to steal these brads. Because frankly, ladies, I do not know where my brads are. I apologize for the inconvenience of making you wait an extra few minutes. But I don't know where they are. So, yeah. We're going to steal from this one that was obviously a sample that never got finished being created. Which I have dozens of. Mandy says so she's got a 110 pound car stock. She's going to try. Oh, if she can get that through her printer. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you that this paper, just like every other paper pad in my store, except for now, I see, I have to kind of save. There are two or three six by sixes that are old that I have not transformed into slimline size yet. So you can't get that in stock. You're going to get it digital only. But most of my papers are available in stock form. And they're not that expensive. I think, I think they're 5 or $6. And the digitals are 3 or $4. Digitals, obviously, you can print over and over and over 100 times. And the, and the stock's going to run out. But if you don't want to waste the ink for your printer, you might want to go with stock. Some people don't want to, you know, don't want to be bothered printing at all. And what happens if their ink runs out or it could just get a little bit messier with digital papers. Um, and then you have to worry, too, about the quality of your digital papers. You know, you want it to be pretty. All right. So what am I going to do now? I'm going to get some arms. Oh, look, this even matches. Wow. I know, right? How lucky could I get, it, huh? That's weird. <laughs> I'm usually not that lucky. Okay, so I'm going to grab a few arms. Look at all these I had printed. Oh, I remember why. I did a Christmas trade, and I made 20 double dial die cards to trade to, uh, you know, swap. It's a swap. That's what it is. It's called a swap. I know. And he says, never run out of ink with this to ink, which is what you use, right? Uh, yes, yes, uh, HP. Yeah, yep, I sure do. I'm going to double this. Save a lot of money that way, too. Yeah, you really do. A ton. Because I print a lot. I mean, 
every pack of paper that is in my store is printed here. So I don't get a mass manufactured because they want you to buy 200 packs at a time because that's their minimum and I'm not doing it. And so no. <laughs> but I buy the highest quality ink, highest quality printer and the best paper I've found. So I have had zero complaints about my design paper. This is a little different of a wheel. I wonder if I have this one. Yes, I do. Apparently, I adjusted the design of the wheel. Maybe between the first one and the second one. See how this one's got like uh, cranks all the way around? This one didn't have the cranks here. Not sure why. But they have the holes in the same spot, so it's good to go. I didn't mean to say cranks. I meant to say, what are those? Mm, what are those things that you put in an engine and a clock? Gears? Gear. Yeah, it looks like a gear, right? Doesn't it? Some people call them clogs. Clogs, yeah. Cag. Cogs. Isn't clogs. it called a cag? <laughs> We're getting a little deep on this. <laughs> Can't see them, they're incognito. Oh, great. You're so funny. Incognito. Is anybody asking anything? No. What is everybody doing this week? Anybody going anywhere? That is so such a sweet thing that this matches perfectly. Okay. So what I want to show you is once you have the base cut and designed with your paper, and the wheel cut and designed with the paper. Everything from this point on is extremely simple. There's a hole that you get cut when you use your double dial die slats, and there's a hole in the wheel. Match them up on the back. There it is. I think I'll use Amy it. Amy says, uh, we just spent a mint on getting our foundation fixed. We'll probably stay home and sulk. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry it caused so much. You know, it it's one of those life things. Um, but at least you're home with somebody you love. <laughs> you know, I mean, it could be worse. I guess. I don't know where my tool went. Let me look in here. When I moved from the other house, I think I put the tool in here. Could have not fixed the foundation with the house wall down. Yeah, it could. Yeah. See, there's a positive in everything. I'm just looking for the little tool that comes with the double dial die. Here it is. I just saw it. Where'd you go? Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, let's toss all this back in here. This is my kind of junk tray. When I, I cut a specific die like the um, the Zinnia Slimline, you get all these little extra leaves and I, I can't throw them away. I don't have it in me, so I just keep everything. It's really not all that big of a deal because it's a cute little square thing. Anyway, long story short, I'm going to stick my tool in, pull the brad wing down best you can. Now I have this tool tripled because you want to leave enough space for your brad to work. I need to go get my nails done this weekend, honey. Okay. okay. Yeah there i don't drive so honey drives me everywhere and you just want it to be nice and loose loosey goosey where did that come from i wonder if that's a lucille ball comment and he says i just keep thinking i could have built on the craft room for that money that's true <laughs> and then the craft room would have fell down too because you have no no foundation you, foundation. you can't <laughs> add extra weight amy no 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 don't add the weight just kind of be patient. It will all work out, I promise. A few years ago, we had a new beam under the house. So this house, second. yes. This is the house that my son bought from us. We bought it from my parents when they retired to Florida. And it's a very small little cottage. And it was built in 1942. So tiny and old. Um, one bedroom. And 
middle of the house was middle of the house was a uh, Boeing. Yeah, absolutely. And so we had to pay to get that metal beam. Steel beam stuck in the Steel steel beam, yeah. And they had to put cement pillars. Oh, it's far cement. To hold those steel under, beam, yeah. To put the jacks on. Yeah, I remember that. Fun. But the house is better. It's not absolutely fixed, but it is better. So what I've done, excuse me, I'm so sorry. What I've done is added a brad to the decorated size uh, section of the wheel. So the brad head is underneath there. And I'm going to stick one of the arms goes here. And then where's my tool? You can use these, which they do come in handy. Um, washer. It makes the paper work on itself a little bit better. And I've got a lot of paper thickness going on here. So bear with me while I try and. You said our wall was boring and another was sinking. You know, the reason for it. that must be awful, James, because if he does any repairs or anything like drywall repair like you did in the bathroom, it's a nightmare. Yeah. When your walls aren't straight and none of the seams from one wall to the next or even the ceiling seam from your wall to your ceiling, if they're not right, it's a, so hard. Okay, I want to make sure that that's loose enough. Yep. And then you can see, I mean, anybody can see how this actually works, right? You're going to put a bread through here, and it's going to go all the way through this slot. Oh, nope, sorry. There you go. I'm backwards. <laughs> I'm upside down. I'm right. looking at it upside down. So your arm goes to this slot, and what happens when you move the wheel is it goes up and down this slot. This arm, when you move the wheel, comes across like this, right? So super simple. You can see that the hole is in alignment. All you need to do is put the washer here, your brad, which previously opened brads can kind of be a pain in the butt because the wings don't come together, right? <laughs> Yeah, let me use my teeth to push them together. There we go. And then you could put another washer there. Kind of want to keep it little. One of the old double dial die sets had three different sizes of washers, just depending on how big your image is. And if it's tiny, you can add a bigger washer to how it. How wide that slot is, too. Yeah. Which I think I've taken out. I think I just put one size washer in the new ones i forgot to use the thingy let's see how it works yeah it's a little tight you don't want it tight i'll tell you that much for sure you want it to be as loose as possible while still holding which is why we need a tool that's why jim came up with why don't you make that tool into a die because i was actually just using edges of paper <laughs> You know how a crafter just goes, oh, I'm just going to try this, and it works. And Jim's like, you should make that into a die. I said, you know what? I should make that into a die. <laughs> so I did. Now what I need is a tool that will push this down, James. All right, so now you can see that those wings are open. Oh, this way, Tammy. They're completely open, but there's a ton of space oh, between... Close. A little too close, so it's blurry. Yeah. Is it still blurry? Yeah, it's got to refocus. Oh. There it goes. Okay. Anyway, they're completely open, not just partially open. So they're holding that paper real good, but it's super loose. There's, you can see, there's a gap between them. See. So, try it out. You can see how super easy that goes. Ding. Ka -ching. All right. That's so cool. <laughs> this really, this double dial die is really super fun. I mean, ladies, I'm chit chatting through the entire process, and and loving every minute of being able to talk to everybody. And gentlemen, if Brian's here, I don't know if he's here, but um, so 
not only is it super easy and fun when you give it to somebody and they're like, oh, how cute, but it's so simple to do that it can talk right while I'm doing it. I'm not even focusing on doing it, really. You can see what has to be put together. It makes it really easy. Put another washer on there. And then the tool, Tammy, I almost forgot it again, James. I use the brads that have real long wings, but they're tiny tops. And I don't have my acrylic nails, so my real nails are not thick and very strong. So I'm just going to use the back of this, pull the tool out, and it's got a ton of little space in there. Let's see. Uh, what did I do? Which way did I go? Which way did I go? Okay, there. There we go. So up and down, up and down, up and down. You can actually make it go all the way up and all the way down. Now it's working better. See? See, and I'm kind of bending and bowing the paper. That's why it needs to be super strong because if it goes off, then it stops working. Now let's apply this to our base, which if I can locate, I've made an absolute disaster zone out of my desk. I'm going to keep it white. Make sure it opens the right way. Nope, I put it on the wrong way, Tammy, this way. All right, so we're going to keep it white so you get to see all the cute little dots around the edges. I'm going to have to flip this over. Which way is this? Oh, I want the opening to be on this end. Yeah, this way. So it's going to open like So it's going to open like this. I don't know how that happened. It shouldn't matter if the dial is over here. You should still be able to come up with a card that. Yeah, just cut the corner off though. Open yeah, I suppose so. In. I suppose so. Okay. Scissors. And it works perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, it opens. No, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I probably have had one cut to the to use it like this. Yeah, open from the bottom. Up. But the paper doesn't match that way, so we're kind of rigging it. Yeah. Which is fine. So then all you need to do is prop up the I have an example of one that's propped up already out. So I'll show you so I don't have to put all the double sided tape on there. Oops, that needs to go back in there. So all you need to do, this one has had its day too. Wow. <laughs> Works good still. You see how it's bowing because it's not strong enough? This part is going in. That's what you want to try to avoid. All right, so it looks like I'm double-sided taping. Uh-oh. <laughs> I think I can find the right stuff because this other stuff is not going to do it. Maybe I'll use. All right, I need some more double sided tape that is like a thicker. Because all I currently have are the little itty bitty circles, and they're just, a, they just don't cover enough space. Echo, add double sided tape <laughs> to the shopping list. <laughs> double sided tape added. It did. She added it. We're going to try these. I haven't even opened this yet. Maybe not. I have all these double-sided um, squares and stuff. But none of the rolled stuff anymore. I need the rolls because they, you know, they cover a lot of space. Probably use all of this. All right, here we go. So you do not want to put your double-sided tape um, 
anywhere in here where it will butt up against or get abused. So you need to watch where you put it here. You obviously can put it up to here, but nowhere in here. Damn, isn't it nice to say that, double-sided phone tape? So you can go here. You can't go here unless you cut. I could probably cut one of these in half. You want to make it as strong as possible because, like I said, once you get that bow, it makes the slider work harder to get done correctly, to get slid. Slider doesn't slide. Know what I mean, Jelly Bean? Yeah. So I can go here. And here. And then you got to take off like 120 of the little <laughs> top, you know, protective, whatever it's called. It'd be kind of cool if they made this then like a bigger sheet. You can just cut out things right? like if you want. So I can get them all across here. No problem. And then two or three more. See, like with that roll of tape, Jim, mm -hmm. you can just put it on there, cut it once, and take one thing off. Yeah. You know what I mean? You follow me? I had to take. 50 of them off. <laughs> I tend to exaggerate. I'm, I'm a lot like Roger. No, we are it's, actually near Metro Airport. We're southeast, uh, southeast Michigan. Is Faith online? No. You should text her and tell her I'm live. She's a teenager. She'll forget. We are about 30 minutes west of Detroit. We're more than 30 minutes away from Detroit, no, aren't we? No. Really? We're only 30 minutes from Ann Arbor, so we're almost dead center. Uh -huh. Who the funk? I'm not the directional person in the family. I think that's entirely up to James. I don't drive. I don't do the directions. It's not my thing. I'm an artist. <laughs> So I have him for that. Okay. That's it. Now, why doesn't it move? Don't you hate when that happens? It's not far enough away. So, yeah. The double sided dots. Thank goodness I made it very thick. The double-sided dots are not thick enough away from the base. And of course, I would push it on there. So I'm going to take this off the best I can. Oh, it's coming off pretty easy, actually. That's bad. How many of you guys have had to deconstruct a project anyway? This is not something that's new to us, right? I mean, I've done it a million times. So Amy is going to uh, Mackinac Island this summer. Yeah, and then she mentioned that last week, I think. I used to go to Mackinac Island all the time with my family when I was young. But you and I have not chosen Mackinac Island as one of those places to, I want to go. I've never been. frequent. You've never been. Never been. Yeah, we'll have to fix that. It's pretty bad. Yeah, a little bit. You do live really close to it. Well, I might use a different base. I might not. We'll have to see. But I am definitely going to take this and I'm going to double all of these. You guys have deconstructed a project, right? This platform is really strong still. Well, Amy says more times than I want to admit to a few <laughs> cards doing that. And it's definitely, <laughs> definitely not the wheel that is the problem. So it's just too close to the paper. I can't stand it when it has all these little extra thingies in here. So let's just double. 
everything. I'm going to show you guys how beautiful this works. That's another thing. With that rolled one, Jim, it's thicker. Yeah. It did not dawn on me that this was not going to be thick enough because I never did have to double the roll. I don't think I've ever seen you use these before. Not for this, no. I've used these. Yeah. I don't get to craft very much anymore, to be frank with you. Like last week's project, I was supposed to come back to my desk this week. And what time is it, honey? It's uh, 10 after 9. Oh, we need to go. Um, I was supposed to come back to my desk last week and take a picture of the project and get it posted. And I never even got back to the desk. So it's uh, it's hard for me to get because, I, I mean, I do all of it. I don't do everything by myself because I would never think that anybody can run a business in a store and, you know, produce everything by themselves. My design team is an absolute blessing and I love them and I wouldn't trade them for anything and I appreciate everything they do. But because I not only illustrate, but create all of my own graphics and do all of my, I don't like how that one is sitting on the other one. I create all the graphics. I create all the package inserts. I create every die. <laughs> I create all the papers, so there's only so much time in a week. I, 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 I Jim can attest to how much I work. She doesn't sleep. I don't sleep. I get up. I get up in the morning somewhere around ten or eleven, and from that point, I have breakfast, and then I'm working until three or four in the morning. Easy. There's the days I went to bed while she was working, <laughs> and I got up, and she was still working. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, but I'm my own boss too, so I have an appreciation for having to do that, you know, and my dad ran his own business and everything, so I kind of get that self-employed people actually do work harder, but I do it because I love, and I don't have to report to anyone, and um, it's my passion. There. Now I bet it works better. Da -da -da! No scratching. Well, you hear it, but it's only because it's the paper. Yeah. It's not because it's rubbing. It's just the paper. All right. So now what was I going to do? I was going to fussy cut. Just so y'all can see how cute this can be. That was an easy bribe. Mandy Mae's going, how does she fussy cut like that all the time? What I need to do is get my brother scan and cut out and actually take advantage of having it. There's just no room on this desk to put any more equipment, though, See, is I there? I would already cut the ears and legs off by now. Would you? <laughs> you don't do the fussying, huh? No. You did okay that one time I asked okay. you to help. I mean, it's not for everyone, but I love it. As long as I get to come to my desk and fussy cut, I'm in heaven. <laughs> You're set. So has anyone that's watching had an opportunity <laughs> to make a double dial die project? Yes or no? We'll wait a minute and see if they answer. Amy has to rearrange her whole kitchen to get out the cricket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's not an easy task, is it, Amy? I have the same issue. Now you're gonna put I don't want to use a whole one. They're too way too big. Yeah. Grab. Yeah. I don't want that after spending all this time. So did you get anybody that said that they've tried it or no? Not yet. I want to know if anybody's tried the double dial die. Do they think it's too hard? Don says she will. Did I make it look easier? So let's put him so he's hopping this direction. Amy's done to see you in the center. Oh. Did she put the project in the TLC Designs Creative Sharing Group? Now she's in trouble. <laughs> I caught her not putting that sharing with us. I've seen some of hers, I think. We love it. Shanna, Shanna and I, 
we talk all the time about um, some of the projects that get done for those sketch easy. We're like, you know, some of our subscribers are so ingenuitive. If I said that word correctly, um, they think outside the box. Maybe they, do, said it was a while ago. they do stuff that uh, you don't see every day. Like I love it when cards don't open the normal way say there's a big flap on the left and a small flap on the right those are the funnest cards if it's not interactive i love interactive the most for sure and i have not made an interactive uh die project on a live for a really long time and i had a, a woman ask me for videos and i'm like boy some of these are really out of date i should do the double dial die again so i am never going to run out of the double dial die it might like this time it did. It might adjust and change and become something different looking, but the mechanism will always be available because it's just one of those things that nobody else has. It's exclusive. I was the original designer of it from the get-go, and I love what it does. It gives you so many opportunities to make kangaroos or bunny rabbits or hares or whatever you want to call them. Jump and move and, you know, toss balls or toys from one place to another. On a card when people get them in the mail they just love them also i'll show you guys another trick we're going to pull a winner too so make sure if you're live with us that you comment so we know that you're here take what do you got? A, a small square There you go. Okay. Back on. He claims that I'm back on. He lost connection. I don't know how that happened. Oh, either. What did you do? You didn't do it, huh? I don't think so. <laughs> he's not going to admit anything. anything. He, he's, he's claiming ignorance. I can tell already it's, it's not something <clears> he's <throat> going to take. All right. So I have this cute little flower. That is called a zinnia from the zinnia slimline die. And I'm going to open these up. It's like, can you go close, James, so that people can see mm -hmm. that they have so much dimension when you open them up like this? What I'm going to do is use this die to cover the bread that's in the front of the card. there. My hands are shaky. There we go. Um, doing this on my ring finger. I'm running out of fingers. <laughs> I you know you guys know me. I'm going to have to put a whole bunch of other little frilly stuff on it. But I wanted to cover the bread that holds the dial on. The pretty flower. And then the other day, I was lucky enough to find somehow, magically, Find some gemstones that can make it plain. Although I'd rather have a colored, something colored. Let's see, this purple maybe? Purple might work. Do we want purple or yellow? Yellow. Yellow. Did you color the rabbits? I did, but did you? No, no, I did not color these. Um... Cassie Hewlett used to do my uh, package insert coloring, and 
when I got these illustrations, she was still working with me and she colored them. But I have them colored on the system because I'm the maker of the dice or the stamp set. So I needed them. Look how cute. They're hopping. And actually, this set comes with uh, carrots and radishes. And so you could actually, instead of having two bunnies, I could put carrots or radishes here. And this one is jumping to reach them. And he could be like down here throwing them or something. Something super cute like that. And then I would put a sentiment up here. I will finish the card and I will post it. I'm going to finish last week's also. I, there's not enough time in the day. Um, so I won't go back on my face tonight because, like I said, I, I've been a little bit under the weather. I'm feeling okay. It's just a little bit, you know, not 100% normal. So um, what are we giving away today? Yeah, let's give something away. What do we want to give away? <sighs> okay. The paper pack's not done yet, and it's not coming out till the 31st. So let's give away. I don't know. What do I want to give away? Maybe I will give these two pieces of paper that are coming out. March 31st in digital format away. They're like not even being sold yet. So it's like a pre preview. That'll be cool. Um, but I also want to give, let's do a free digi too. So they can choose whatever digital stamp set they want in the store. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to spin the wheel. He's spinning. He's not really spinning. But the wheel's spinning. The wheel is spinning. Speaking of speed. <laughs> there is also a Hopping Friends sentiment stamp set that will be in the exclusive uh, suite at the end of the month that goes perfectly with anything that hops. Got some really cute sayings to go with the hopping animals, the critters that hop either the kangaroos or the hares or whatever. So that would be in the exclusive set as well. And maybe I'll get something from there and put them on here so that I can advertise how cute they go together and they coordinate. Okay. Boom. Who's our winner? Mandy May. <gasps> Mandy May. Congratulations, girl. Contact me at, and put this at the bottom of the screen, please, James. TLC service at gmail.com. And I will say good night to everyone. Thank you so much for joining. If this was your first time, I hope you enjoyed it. We're kind of a close knit little group of people that show up on Thursday night at eight o'clock just to see me um, chit chat a little, maybe pick up a tip or a trick, or I do want to restart the flower making series also. It kind of got stopped with having to sell my house. So um, maybe I'll do that next weekend. And then we have the release coming out, hopefully across all of our fingers that China gets the dyes in uh, close to the 30th of March. We should, we should be able to release them. So Keep an eye out. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. We are still running the sketch challenge. So if you want to win $5 to the store, you can always make a card with the challenge. Follow along. There's a tutorial that Lynn, uh, it's called LV Handcrafted or Handmade um, Spot on YouTube. She did the, the tutorial and it's on the TLC Designs YouTube channel. And we will see you next Thursday night. I believe you don't have any issues that are coming up on Thursday. So. so we'll see you next Thursday night at 8 o'clock. I love you all. Um, come and join me anytime to learn to live creatively together. And we'll see you next week. Bye.